Okay, looks like we have another intriguing discovery coming from the James Webb Space Telescope. And this one once again in regards to galactic evolution. But this time even more surprising than before. Most likely confirming that the current understanding for how galaxies evolve is probably wrong. But not because the Big Bang did not happen or because the universe is much older than we originally thought. Actually quite the opposite. The Big Bang and the overall age of the universe was confirmed in a separate study around the same time. Instead, what these new discoveries present is a completely different story for how various galactic shapes seem to evolve over time. Ironically, something very similar was discussed in a separate paper and in a separate video from just a few weeks ago, where we actually discuss how the current model for galactic evolution is most likely wrong. It needs to be rewritten. And these James Webb Space Telescope observations physically confirm that this is definitely true. And so, hello wonderful person, this is Anton. Let's discuss these two new papers, what exactly they discover and what it means, and also talk about a few things that we still cannot explain. And I guess let's start with the obvious. So approximately 100 years ago, the famous Edwin Hubble officially discovered the universe. He basically found evidence that various unusual spiral nebula were actually individual galaxies really, really far away. Up until that point, it was actually believed that the universe was just the size of one galaxy and was our galaxy the Milky Way. Everything else was inside of it, with different objects around us just being different nebula. But pretty quickly the scientists realized that that's not the case and we do have so many different galaxies out there. And within just a few years, Hubble was able to work out how various galaxies seem to connect to one another. He proposed what's known as the Hubble classification scheme or the Hubble tuning fork. The idea that different types of galaxies evolve into one another based on the interaction nearby and of course based on their age. Everything starts with the elliptical galaxy that turns into a lenticular galaxy which then becomes some kind of a spiral. But as we discussed in that previous video in the description, that might not be the case. And so over the years the scientists realized that this particular picture doesn't really make sense. Because here the idea was that we should actually be seeing a lot of elliptical galaxies in the ancient universe, quite a few lenticular galaxies somewhere in the middle, and quite a lot of spiral galaxies in the modern universe near us. Now we do see quite a lot of spiral galaxies close to us, but when it comes to looking back in time, things get pretty complicated pretty quick. And though the galactic evolution itself is still not super clear, what's clear is that this seems to be wrong. But let me actually give you some visual evidence from the Hubble Space Telescope in order to see why this was believed to be true for many years. And in just a minute or so, we'll also take a look at the data from the James Webb Space Telescope. So over a decade ago, Hubble was able to collect huge amounts of data. And it was also able to see quite a lot of distant galaxies. Quite a lot of them resembled something like this. They were basically all somewhat spherical and all resembled something that seems to be elliptical in shape. And all of these galaxies were billions of light years away from us. Here's one of the closer examples from the Hubble, NGC 2865. And so many galaxies that it was seen far away were basically kind of like this. And in terms of evidence and mathematics and logic and previous predictions, all of this kind of made sense. But by looking even farther back in time, we should be detecting more irregular galaxies or galaxies with very peculiar shapes. So basically shapes that are not entirely defined. And that's because in this case, the galaxies are still colliding, still forming, and are still somewhat unstable. To some extent, some of these galaxies were actually seen by the Hubble as well. But Hubble was mostly good at seeing optical light. It was not a telescope for seeing infrared or for looking even farther back in time. So it had its limits. And it was of course able to confirm that in the nearby universe, spiral galaxies were extremely common. Basically, this is the most common type of a galaxy nearby. And of course, based on the planet Earth, it was also assumed to be the type of a galaxy most likely to have sun-like stars, Earth-like planets, and potentially life. But based on these observations, the other assumption that was made previously suggested that in terms of spiral galaxies and in terms of their formation, they actually should be a more novel development. As in prior to a certain period, they actually should not exist at all. Some of the previous studies suggested that up until the universe became 6 billion years old, it was most likely impossible to have these galaxies around. Basically suggesting that it probably took at least 
7 billion years for many of these galaxies to finally stabilize their shapes. That of course includes the Milky Way. And once again, based on that Hubble data, there was very little reason to doubt any of this. Many of these galaxies were elliptical or irregular, and none of them seemed to be spiral. And then James Webb goes, hold my beer. I mean, really hold it, because like, I have no hands. And basically goes and looks at the same galaxies one more time, discovering things that were previously completely invisible, and in essence uncovering that pretty much most of those galaxies that were previously believed to be elliptical were actually just the visible cores of much larger galaxies that were spiral, or at least disk-like in shape, possessing that perfect disk structure. With many of these galaxies observed as far back as 10 billion years ago, and also representing the most common type of a galaxy back then as well. And though these galaxies were always believed to be somewhat fragile to exist so early on, the evidence is pretty clear. They definitely existed, and there were quite a lot of them as well. As a matter of fact, the evidence suggests that there were at least 10 times more of them than ever predicted. With this observation potentially presenting new problems, but also new exciting opportunities. Although first of all, let's actually get the obvious out of the way. No, it doesn't mean that the Big Bang didn't happen, and it does not mean that the universe is much, much older than we originally believed. I'll explain to you why in a minute or so. But it does mean that the theories of galactic evolution, the ones that we have right now, are just extremely primitive and do not explain everything in the way that they should. So, for example, on the one hand, it seems to suggest that the entire structure in the universe very likely formed much, much quicker implying that there is definitely something guiding everything, and that something prefers these disk shapes as that preferred final result. Right now, the best explanation for that something is the mysterious cosmic web. Something we've discussed many times before, and something we have a lot of evidence for, basically this unusual formation across the universe that seems to direct and guide everything. All of the matter, all of the galaxies, everything in those galaxies. And so, for some reason, it seems to like forming disk shapes. Not necessarily spiral disks, sometimes just flat disks that we usually refer to as lenticular galaxies, which are also very common in the universe as well. Here's one of the most famous ones, NGC 2787. But either way, they seem to be the most common, and to some extent, the most likely to form during most periods in the entire universe. And so, even though previous observations by the Hubble predicted most galaxies to be irregular or peculiar, at least at the redshift of 1.5 to approximately 6.5, and that's over 6 billion years in the past, the James Webb observations, with approximately 4,000 different galaxies observed and analyzed very thoroughly, revealed a lot of hidden structures, some of them could be lenticular, and some of them could be spiral. And most importantly, this included very massive galaxies with masses similar to the Milky Way. So basically, relatively old galaxies that started developing a long time ago and evolved over billions of years. Intriguingly, this also implies that the majority of stars in the entire universe very likely evolved inside some kind of a disk galaxy. Not a regular galaxy, not elliptical, most likely a disk-like galaxy similar to the Milky Way. That by itself is already a pretty big discovery, especially when it comes to the idea of extraterrestrial intelligence somewhere out there. It sort of dramatically boosts the chance for the existence of some kind of alien life out there quite dramatically. To some extent, this also confirms the previous observation and the previous scenario I've discussed in that video in the description, confirming that galaxies do evolve very differently from how we originally thought, but more importantly, once again suggesting that we just don't get what is actually guiding the galactic evolution across the entire universe. Now, it's assumed to be some kind of an invisible force, like maybe dark matter, but at the moment, it's unknown. Hopefully, James Webb will be able to answer this really soon. But what about that idea that maybe Big Bang never happened, or that maybe the universe is much older? Well, this is where this other study comes in, pretty much using a very similar data set or very similar galaxies. Dilution of chemical enrichment in galaxies 600 million years after the Big Bang. And here, by looking at even older galaxies, scientists wanted to confirm or possibly disprove the relationship between galactic mass and the amount of heavy elements in each of the galaxies. The idea here is really simple. If a galaxy is really old, it should be pretty massive. If a galaxy is really old, it should also have a lot of heavy elements that are not just hydrogen and helium. 
naturally the result of various supernova and the evolution of elements. More massive galaxies should have more heavy elements. But here the scientists once again discovered something maybe a little bit different. Still easily explainable, but just not what they expected. Even though the relationship today sort of looks like this, this is heavy elements versus galactic mass, those early galaxies had it more extreme. Less massive galaxies had significantly less heavy elements compared to what was originally predicted. Which in essence implied that they were extremely underdeveloped and there's no way that they're older than just a few million years. In this case this was approximately four times less amount than predicted. And though this might seem like another problem, this is actually not a problem at all. Because here we're looking at early universe where we're basically witnessing galactic formation in the process. Huge amounts of hydrogen and helium moving into various galaxies really fast and helping them grow really massive really quick. Because according to this explanation, if the actual observation was very similar to how it is today, or basically if this relationship was similar to this, you would assume that this galactic equilibrium was reached much earlier and the universe could have been much older. But because we actually see this, it presents us with the image of very light gas, hydrogen and helium, mixing into smaller galaxies, helping them grow and develop really fast. Much, much faster than in modern universe. And so basically, this is a confirmation of the Big Bang Theory and the dramatic evolution of the universe in the first billion years. And so in this case, the observations from the Gene Club both present us with a new mystery and a very specific explanation for why the Big Bang is most likely the best explanation we have. And you can actually learn a little bit more about all of these concepts in some of the previous videos that explain more in the description below. But at least for now, this is definitely a really exciting discovery. A confirmation that, maybe just maybe, this is the most common type of a galaxy in the entire universe, no matter where you look. So for some reason, the universe really likes disks. But why? Well, nobody knows. It's probably because of the dark matter, and it's probably because of the guidance from that enormous cosmic web, but exactly how any of this works or how this affects the formation of galaxies is not a question we're going to be answering anytime soon. But still, pretty exciting times to be a cosmologist or to learn about galactic evolution and how the galaxies evolve over time. We'll come back and talk more about this once there are some new discoveries. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye. And I have a sombrero.